Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast here at Bible Tract Echoes. We like to study the Word of God each and every day. We like to apply the Word of God both to those who love the gospel and those that need the gospel. But on our Tuesday broadcast, we really get our give ourselves over to encourage and strengthen each other in giving up the gospel, telling the gospel, just trying to impact the society around us with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to encourage people to tell the gospel orally. We want to encourage people to give out the gospel and gospel tracts, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, if you can, turn there. I'm going to read one verse here in just a moment. Well, here's my most recent gospel track story. You ready? Last evening, my second son called to say his car was broke down and stranded alongside the road about 20 miles north of where I live. His alternator had gone out. So I bought an alternator, picked it up, picked up my son-in-law, headed north. It took about an hour or so to replace the alternator, and then the three of us headed to a restaurant where the two sons were were more than willing to let dad pay for the meal. Well, as the meal was ending, our waitress came over one more time. I asked her if she had children. She said she does. I asked their ages, and they are elementary age. I asked her if their children ever asked her any hard questions. Well, she just about laughed out loud and said yes, and it happened just recently. I handed her one of our gospel tracts entitled, Seven Questions Boy boys and girls ask. I said, here is something I found really helps when kids ask questions about God. I think you'll find it helpful as well. She thanked me and willingly took the track. Now, why in the world do I tell you the story? Well, the answer for that is the reason for the broadcast. You stay tuned, please. I've got a gospel tract in my hand right now, and the only problem with it, it's in my hand and not yours. If you just hang on a wee bit, my announcer is going to come back on at the end of the broadcast. He's going to give to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Have a pen and paper ready. Jot down the way that works for you because I want to send you a free sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Not just the seven question track I mentioned here, but the one in my hand right now, which is titled Seriously Seriously. Speaking, seriously speaking, at the bottom of the face, it has these words. You may be sincerely wrong. Seriously speaking, you may be sincerely wrong. Here is a great, great gospel tool. It begins this way. Can one be saved from hell and go to heaven by sincerely trusting in good works and religion? No, more than you can be cured of stomach trouble by swallowing poison. It is not sincerity alone that counts. You'd better be sure you get a hold of the right bottle of medicine. Well, that's the way the track begins. And the goal of the track is to help people see that you can be sincere about religion, but your sincerity is in the wrong medicine. There is only one cure for sin, death, and hell. It's the person of Jesus Christ and his shed blood at Calvary. He, Christ, died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again, all in accordance with the scripture that you and I could be right with God, have our sins forgiven, have the gift of eternal life given to us, 
All of our gospel tracks present the gospel. This one is a great, great gospel tool. Get it from us. Please be ready when my announcer gives that contact information. And this week, you'll hear me talk about an ongoing project we have. We're getting ready to print one point. 3 million gospel tracks again in the country of Pakistan. Our tracks are having a major, major impact there. The trouble is 1.3 million tracks cost money. That project costs us about $22,000. These tracks will be put to use, I guarantee you, as they're used, thousands of men and women, boys and girls, Young people, they're going to come to Christ. You know why I know that? It's happened before, about three or four times before. When we print these tracks, please, would you consider helping us with this project? The workers are ready. They're in place. We just need to get the tracks printed. Pray about that, would you please? Thank you so much. I have my Bible open, as I said, to Psalm 119. Verse 46 says this, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. Let me read it again. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. You and I have been called by God to speak his testimonies. Now, in the narrow sense of that word testimonies, it refers to the testimonies of the people in Scripture. We learn from the people in the Bible. We learn what they did right and how things handled and how things came because of that. We also learn from those who did things wrong. There's a lot of those in Scripture, and we find the consequences for their actions. But in the broader sense, the testimonies of God refers to His Word. The good news is that we have not only His testimony of man's sinfulness, we also have God's testimony of his love for sinners even while we are yet in our sins. Psalm 119 verse 46 says that we are to speak of God's testimonies. That sounds a lot like evangelism to me, doesn't it to you? We are not ashamed of God's word. Over in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, there we're told that we are not to be ashamed of God's words in the midst of this adulterous age. The book of Romans, chapter 1, says that because the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to save sinners from hell and death, we ought not be ashamed of it. Well, beloved, God's people are called to speak of his testimonies, and we need to be encouraging each other in this whole task, but not really by using guilt trip kinds of methods to get people to tell the gospel. Most believers I know want to be a witness. They want to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. They long. Most people, most believers in Jesus Christ never lead another soul to Christ. Most, though, want that. They long for that. Two key factors holding them back are these, fear, and number two, not knowing how to get started. A lot of believers know the gospel. They know how to tell it once they get into it. They just don't know how to get started. Well, that's why I told you the story at the beginning of the broadcast. I wanted you to see a very practical way to open a person's heart to receive a, a track. You see, I wanted more than just merely that uh, that waitress to give her a track, put a track in her hand. I wanted her to have a reason to read it. Now, sometimes the situation is such that I can't do that. All I can do is offer the track, and rarely are the tracks refused. When that happens, I simply and quickly do a flare prayer that God would take the track that I've handed the person, the track that they have received without any encouragement by me to read it, that they will just read the track by the prompting of a holy, righteous, loving God. Evangelism is the work of God. We're just passing out the gospel seed. If God's not in it, then we're not going to get any fruit. But God loves to honor his word. Now, Today's track, Sincerely Speaking, is it's a great track. Not long ago, I was in the line at the grocery store. 
the person that was next to me in line, he and I were commenting on the bold headlines on some of the magazines at the checkout. Now, you got to be careful about some of those magazines. They're not fit to look at, but these magazines had some really, well, here's the Hebrew word, wacky. They had some wacky, bold headlines on them. One headline spoke about how an actor had had a spiritual experience. I said to my friend there in line, here's what I said. I said, everybody pretty much believes that they are a spiritual person, don't they? Well, my friend agreed. Then I said, some people have some pretty strange ideas about God. And to this, he chuckled and said, boy, that's a fact. Well, at that point... I said to the guy that there is a lot of sincere people around when it comes to God, but they can't be all correct. They can't be all right because they don't, they contradict with each other. Here's something I found that helped me with all of this. As I'm saying that, I'm handing him this track, Sincerely uh, Speaking. It simply lets the Bible speak for itself. Now, with that, I handed the person the track, and he took it and replied, thank you, and he starts to read it right there in front of me while he's waiting in line. That's a good thing. You know why? Because he may read something in there that causes a question, and I'm still there to give him an answer. I like it. I like continuing the conversation. My friend, to become a person who tells the gospel for people who hands out gospel tracts, we need to do just a little bit of preparation. It's amazing to me how many people will prepare to get to work on time. They will get their alarm clock and get it set. They will go to bed at a good time. That Some people even lay their clothes out ahead of time, all to be prepared to get to work. Well, being prepared to hand out a gospel track is a good thing. Are you prepared to do that today? Are you prepared to give out a gospel track? How do you get prepared? Number one, you get a gospel track. Read it through. That's number two. Read it through and begin to ask a couple of questions. Question number one is this. Why does a lost person need to read this track? Why does a lost person need to read this track? Here's another question. What reason can I give to encourage this person to not merely accept the track, but urge them to read it? What reason can I give them? Here's another question. What question in life that many people ask does this gospel track answer? You see, if you know the answers to these questions, you'll be ready to give the person a reason to accept the track and stir in their soul a reason to begin to read it. Friend, make plans to advance the gospel through your life today. Perhaps you're listening to me today and you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. Do you know the word gospel means, literally means good news? There's good news for your soul. Oh, the bad news is this. Your soul is sin-stained and the stain is there because you have sinned. You have broken God's law. The good news is that there's a way to clean your soul. But there's only one medicine for that soul, and that is the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross. Out of love, Jesus died to pay your sin debt, that you through him could be saved from your sin. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.